Good morning. Welcome back to Why in the Morning. You are watching the Y254 channel. Remember, we are freshly on DSTV channel 376. And right now, we are talking Tuesday Entrepreneurship. So if you guys want to reach out to us, please make sure you hashtag Tuesday Entrepreneurship, hashtag Why in the Morning. And remember that you can do so on our Facebook and our Twitter page. That is Y254 channel. And then on Instagram, that's Y254 underscore channel. I can be found on Twitter alone on Joy underscore Mochache. My name is Joy Mochache. Once again, we are here with our final interview we have a wonderful man who has created a very important initiative here in Kenya his name is Alan Herbert I'll let him say exactly what that initiative is Karibu Mr. Herbert we're proud to have you on set thank you very much yes uh, as uh, pardon your name please sorry my name yes joy you can just oh. call me joy oh, okay as uh, Madame Joy has said my name is Alan Herbert I professionally, I am a training, I'm a journalist also. Okay, great. Yeah. And uh, I run an initiative called Black Urbanism, Black where Urbanism. I basically say, discover, come discover the greatness in me. Yes. Because I believe there is a lot of greatness that lies mm -hmm. or hidden into us, mm -hmm. but there is nobody willing to discover the, the, the greatness. Yeah. So I say, why not come up with an initiative which, t which targets? the talent that lies in persons living with albinism. Right. Yeah. So this is an initiative that you created that targets um, the talent that people with albinism are holding within themselves so yeah. that you can nurture those talents and have them, you know, have those talents, I guess, <laughs> manifest somehow. Yeah, because yes. uh, I believe once the talent is manifested, I believe we will also be creating awareness in, an, in a more interesting and uh, yeah, more interesting way yeah okay i see and you know um this is to entrepreneurship so we do have to focus on the initiative that you have created as an entrepreneur can we talk more about the black albinism initiative and when you started it uh, i started back in the dream has been long the idea came into mind in 2015 and uh, since 2015 i've been trying to find ways how do i break ground as uh, always uh, entrepreneurship wise they say it's quite hard to start if you don't have money but then narratives are changing yes. you can even start without the money yeah. so i i had to shift goal posts mm -hmm. and uh, stop looking at where am i getting the cash and mm -hmm. i told myself how can i use the little that i have mm -hmm. to kick start uh the initiative so back into 2018 finally he said okay let's get done with dreaming let's get to work so in 2018 we kick started off with our first project right which was uh, a short film called right. the rejected treasure the rejector the rejected treasure the rejector treasure yeah wow. and uh, that's how we we started up and to that right we're still moving on right and if I could just read your mission to our viewers, because I think it's an excellent mission. Um, the, the mission for uh, Black Albinism Initiative reads as follows. Discover, nurture, and manage talent in people living with albinism, and they create a positive and creative awareness through doing that. I think that's wonderful. Um, speaking of initiatives, how, in what ways would you say this initiative is an entrepreneurship? <coughs> Basically... I believe in working up, going to do what I love most. Okay. Doing what you love does not give you any pain. Like yeah. if you both, if I, if my director told me, Alan, carry that desk over there, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind because that's my passion. That's what I really want. So in an, in an entrepreneurial perspective, if we nurtured our talent, then we wouldn't find it hard going to work, working for our talent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you did say that you're right now working on being a journalist. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, how, did you, how did you discover this talent within yourself? Or the interest within yourself? The interest within myself. When I was growing up, I, I used to write a lot. And, uh, That's how it starts. <laughs> yeah, writing. I used to write a lot. <laughs> then, uh, unfortunately, I kind of dropped out of school. But uh, the dream never died. So I was seated in the house and I looked at the issues around parenting and I said, okay, how can I come up with a concept to solve issues that do with parenting? Then I sat down, did my research, then came up with a show mm -hmm. called uh, 
there was as a show parenting on air something like that wow then i took it to sell it to somebody yes. then they were like okay have you ever done journalism okay. and i'm like uh uh then they were like how about you first go to school do journalism then see how we can make this a reality so that's how i found myself in journalism school right yeah right the passion was in me but uh, i had not found the right path and the right ways mm -hmm. to join mm -hmm. journalism school right right and now you found you found a way to join that and the reason why and the reason why and i'm almost out so mm -hmm. you're almost out how long do you have left i think i only have that coming month oh my god Ah, well, we'll celebrate with you. Congratulations in <laughs> thank advance. You. Congratulations thank you. Thank in advance. You. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, you did mention that you you picked up a parenting uh, topic to focus on. Why at that time did you choose parenting? What was so important at that time that you saw parenting out of all the other things you could have discussed? Why parenting? I, looking at the perspective that I'm doing an initiative albinism, most of our, our relatives mm -hmm. or parents mm -hmm. per se, they neglect us at a very tender age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because some of them don't know how to take us. The science is very complicated and I believe parenting is the issue why we have all most of the not all, but most of the problems that are being faced in society today. Mm -hmm. It's because of parenting. Poor parenting. Yeah. And I believed, okay, if we did if we add parenting on TV in a fun and cool way and talk down to the core issues that really matter mm -hmm. about parenting, mm -hmm. then we will solve a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of issues. Looking at my my journey, I personally did not grow up with my parents, so oh, okay. I know how it feels if you have a parent there and they act as if they're not there. It's even worse than having them than. It's worse than knowing you don't have them, yes. but you knowing that my parent is somewhere out there and they're acting as if I'm not here. Yes. It's very devastating. Of course. Yeah. So you chose that as a topic of focus. You took that to somebody, you tried to sell it, and that person said, this is great, but first of all, why don't you go and sharpen your skills in journalism? When you're through, then you can come through and we can talk, so, talk some more about it. Yes. I see. What are we looking at over here? Okay, what we're looking at over here is your Instagram page. Yeah, that's my Instagram page. Okay. And uh, some of the pictures I used, I created them to bolster an initiative I'm working on. Oh, hold on. Is that back in the days of slavery? Are those siblings, one is black, one is an albina? Yeah, one is a person with albinism. Uh -huh. uh, it's a famous circus back in 18 and 1860 something there. It was in England. Those are the first, some of the first photographs that were taken of persons living with albinism. What? So they thought, oh, this is interesting, and decided to take a photo. And actually, back in the days, it's only circus where they could, where persons with albinism could find employment because they've kind of uh, tried to find places to feed them, and it was quite hard. But they looked funny and all that stuff, so they said, why not make them? Why not use them to make people laugh? So they took them to the circus. Terrible. Terrible. That's unfortunate. But now the narratives we are looking to change mm -hmm. and uh, polish on our talents so that polish. we can... Is this your logo? Yeah, that's my logo. I absolutely love it. Black albinism, discover the greatness in me. I yes. love your logo. I love the simplicity in it. Yes, and it goes right straight to the point. And let me ask you, how many people do you have right now who are albinos, who have been interested in your initiative, who are saying, you know what, Mr. Herbert, I love what you're doing and I want you to help me discover the talent in me? Yeah. Uh, people do not take change lightly, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as time goes by, I already have a number and uh, I believe when you're starting it's hard for people to believe in you mm -hmm. but when they see the progress mm -hmm. step by step they say okay now this is something that uh, you have something going on right here yes. then let's come on board but yeah. i already have a number of guys i'm working with because uh, running such an initiative you need a lot of talent yes. you need uh, 
people to help you with the legal work, you need people to help you with account stuff, you need people to help you here and there on social media. So my team is comprised of people living with albinism and those who do not live with albinism so that we can mix the talent and push the initiative. Right. In and also with, with that kind of diversity, you have ideas coming from different areas. Yeah. That's a good thing about a diverse team. Yeah. If we're only people with albinism, we'll be like... You'd have your own, own yeah. perspectives about exactly. albinism. But when we get in different people from all different walks of life, everybody comes up with a fun idea and you're like, okay, I did not think about it in that perspective. We've got to work on this one. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. And so you said that you have different talents um, working in, because that's what makes an initiative like this one work. Yeah. When you first started, did you start alone? Or did you start with someone holding your hand at, at, the, at the very beginning? I mean, at the inception of it, when it first bubbled in your heart and yeah. it had to overflow and you started, were you alone? You're very alone. When you're starting, actually, you're very... Because when you're dreaming, you're alone. Yes, so that means when you're starting, you're alone. Because no one is dreaming with you. Yeah, no one is dreaming with you. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to convince people even to come on board. And it's something very new. Nobody has ever... They've not seen it. People do not like uh, traveling new, new, new roads. Yes. Getting them on board and finally convincing them, it's quite hard. Yeah. It's a feat. Huh? Yeah, but I started up alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily enough, how it all kicked off, finally when it picked pass, it's like I remember tutors who had switched in our department. Uh, a tutor left, then another one came in. Mm -hmm. And I remember I am the class representative in my semester. Okay. So I remember. Class rep. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember uh -huh. the new tutor called me uh, to the office and he's like, okay, I've come in the middle of the semester, but we don't want to push off this, uh, this unit. Actually, we are doing entrepreneurship. So he asked, what are some of the, 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 the topics you would like me to take you through yes. so that we can still have the end of semester exams? Then I was like, People have issues writing proposals and all that stuff and all that stuff. Then he said, okay, go propose to your class. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Then come back, tell me. Yes. So I proposed to the class and the class was like, yeah, we're good. So went back to the teacher. The teacher came, started teaching. And I was busy listening the way he was explaining, giving all these notes and all that stuff. Immediately when he was done teaching, something told me, Alan, follow the teacher to the staff room talk to him about your initiative. Then I went up to him and said, okay, Mwalimu, I've got everything that you've taught, but have you ever written a proposal or have you ever done something of this sort? <laughs> wow. And he's like, yeah, I've ever organized events and all that stuff, but uh, I've never gone down this journey, but let me show you how we do it. That's how we started. Okay. Told me, find a number of people who you can sell your idea to, mm -hmm. then bring them on the table then right. let's talk. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wonderful. That's, that's all how it started. And that's how it all started. Now, here we are. And here we are. Yes. What are we watching here? Uh, I remember this, 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 this. Hmm. Yeah. This is a short clip I did. Okay. I'm a hustler who come Ah. I do a lot of things. As Great. long as, I believe, as long as it brings me money. Right. And it's legitimate. Mm -hmm. I will do it. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was... Uh, uh, maybe just before you explain, can I read the caption really quickly? Yeah. Yeah, so it says, as long as it's decent trade, laying your hands isn't going to solve a thing. Even the greatest man in the history of making sports cars, which is Enzo Ferrari, started out as a race track cleaner. Even I didn't know that. Mr. Ferrari, the guy who, who started Ferrari, yeah. started off by cleaning racetracks. Yes, he started off by cleaning racetracks. Wow, so the dream, man, the dream. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to, like, finally see your dream out there. Mm. Yeah. So this, I took it, uh, uh, I was with my friends, Ukomtani, Tukuyosha Magari. Then I was like, okay, many people say that we live fake lives on social media. Then I said, let me show them how we really do it. The real life. Yeah, the real life. So I did a short video. I posted it on my Instagram page. And that's you. And that's me. I'm proud of you.
Wow, that's good. Thank you, thank yes. you. So you're not just being, you know, um, you're not just helping people or not just, actually you're yourself everywhere. You're yourself in your room, you're yourself in your classroom, you're yeah. yourself Guam Ta. Yeah. Guys just know you as that one guy who just is himself. You have a very, I think, uh, what they call a one-sided coin, which is what makes people what they call, quote unquote, real. Yes, and uh, that's what I believe can actually help fuel your entrepreneurship. Because you have that one side of a coin where you're interested in, you know the path of your journey, you've mapped it out properly, and I think you're a very, very ambitious person. And I do hope that you'll get to achieve much more with uh, the Black Albinism Initiative. Lastly, can I please get to know some of the projects that are upcoming? The projects that are upcoming. Because we're interested, man. We need to know. <laughs> we love what you're doing. Yeah, we have two projects that are upcoming. One is a photo challenge, and the other is a football match. So I don't know where, which I should start explaining. Uh, you can with. start with the one that's soonest, and then you can finish with the one that's going to come later on. Okay. Uh, now, we're doing the Black Albinism Photo Challenge. All right. Basically, we When want, is that? We are launching. It's going to be... It's going to run the whole of June because okay. actually June is international. On 13th June is International Albinism Awareness Day. When is day? Uh, huh. International Albinism Awareness Day. Awareness Day, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Awareness Day yes. on 13th June. All right. So the photo challenge is going to, we're going to launch it on uh, 31st May. Right. At a primary school, which I can't remember perfectly the name. That's fine. <laughs> yeah and it will be running the whole of June. Uh -huh. Basically, what we're looking to capture with the photo challenge mm -hmm. is uh, the inclusivity that has happened since we started, since, pa since many m different people took up the task of championing for rights uh, of persons who live with albinism. I won't say I'm the first, mm -hmm. and I won't say that I'm at the last. Yes. So we have to appreciate those who have done the work. Yes. And now ours, Black Albinism, is to document uh, that success. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about the second event? Uh, the second event is a football match. All right. uh, this one we are partnering with a short stature society of Kenya, uh, these short guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Basically, they short are. Short stature. Community. Yeah, short wow. stature society of Kenya. I, there's something like that. Interesting. It, yeah, there's something like that. Oh my God. And they so have a I... full football team. Wow. Yeah. A lot I need to learn. I'm proud of my country. <laughs> Please go on. Yeah, uh, we believe uh, there are so many narratives around uh, disability. So on the 15th day of June, that we, I reached out to them and said, okay, since uh, International Albinism Awareness Day is on 13th June and we cannot have a football match on, on a Thursday, mm. why not do an activity on a Saturday where we will create awareness about albinism and also create awareness generally on disability then they were like okay come up with a plan let's see how we can work that around our necks all right yeah so the football match will be at uh, the city stadium the city stadium yeah. the one and only the one and only city yeah. stadium uh we will open gates at uh, around nine all right till noon nine to noon yeah i hope i'm a shika here and the uh, entry is free of charge because yes. we really don't want you to to miss that Okay. Yeah. We shall make our way. Uh, a little bit more info about uh, the photo challenge. Basically, we have uh, we have six categories we are looking at. Mm -hmm. We have the health sec the health category. Okay. Uh, education. We have uh, lifestyle. We have social. We have arts, and uh, any fun creative thing that you can do. Basically, we want to place a single person with albinism at a place of prominence mm. in each picture. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, where we're doing the photo challenge launch, this girl, I think she's seven, and she's the only student with albinism in the whole of the school. Wow. Now, that's inclusivity. Yes. Basically, we are including people with albinism in the different things that happen in our society. Of so course. that's what we want to capture uh -huh. in the photo challenge. Right. A man with a vision, a man with a plan. Ah, Mr. Herbert, much respect to you. And I love how you've turned a passion into um, a business. And it's not, I'm not saying that in neg negative connotation at all. I think it's beautiful because going back to the first words you said when you first sat down, you said that when you're doing what you love, you don't find it being work. 
you don't find it being entrepreneurship you don't find it being business you wake up gladly and you put all your effort in it and I really respect that and I do see you as an entrepreneur and thank you so much for coming to open up to the world and create awareness on what the initiative that you started called the black um, albinism initiative thank you so much for that we do enjoy having you on our set we do have to sign out and this has been why in the morning my name is Joy Mochache it has been wonderful Wonderful having you guys watch us. Do stay tuned in for much, much more.